much for your time and your consideration. As a mother, voter, educator, and South Carolinian, I'm deeply concerned about proposed SB 115, which would allow for open carry without background checks, fingerprinting, or gun safety training. In a time in which gun violence is flourishing, we should be seeking to pass responsible gun regulation legislation. I believe firmly in the Constitution and respect citizens' rights to keep and bear arms. However, the courts have determined that these rights are not to go unchecked. In an open society such as ours, we are obligated to protect those freedoms through regulation where it is needed and warranted. We have an obligation to our fellow South Carolinians, to our children, to the health of our communities and our state to ensure that our rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are not hampered by our Second Amendment rights. At a time when we are seeing more and more firearm violence, we need to be closing loopholes for universal background checks. We need to make sure that people who purchase and carry guns know how to use those guns safely. Background checks, gun safety training, and fingerprinting do not prevent freedom. Nor do I believe that they will end. I'll wait. Nor do I believe that they will end gun violence in this country. I know there is a complex set of circumstances that contribute to violent crime in the United States involving more than the regulation of firearms. Everything from concerns over mental health, to stronger law enforcement, to community education, and just looking out for one another. But while regulatory legislation is not a panacea, lifting basic, common sense restrictions makes no sense at all. Thank you for your consideration, and I have copies of my testimony for the committee to, uh, to have. Thank you. <laughs>
Like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. Our elected leaders must now act responsibly to make decisions that save lives. Instead, we are talking about making guns more accessible and with absolutely no training or education. This is ridiculous. Our politicians should be working together to support House Bill 3186, which focuses on gun safety and keeping guns locked so that children won't gain access to them, as well as Senate Bill 309, which absolutely would save lives and reduce domestic homicides in South Carolina by effectively removing guns from convicted domestic abusers. Allowing concealed weapons in bars or open carry are not wise decisions, and I am certain will lead to more problems, accidents, and shootings. I do not envy the job of our police officers that already struggle with late night crowds here in downtown Greenville. Introducing weapons into the mix will only endanger our officers and the general public. If saving lives isn't reason enough, then look at the financial implications of gun violence. It costs every single American $564 of our taxpayers to deal with gun violence. Every gun homicide costs over half a million dollars of government resources. You're proposing legislation, legislation that may cost us lives and even more tax dollars when things could go wrong with a gun. I would much rather this money be in my own pocketbook than for paying for preventable gun violence. I stand with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. We are nonpartisan, we are grassroots, and we will not back down from ensuring common sense gun regulations are enacted to prevent and tackle the gun violence epi epidemic that destroys the lives of South Carolinians. Sandy Hook changed everything. We speak for the children whose voices were silenced by gun violence. We speak for the children whose voices have been silenced by gun violence, but perhaps what is more urgent is that we speak for the boys and girls who are yet to die this year in South Carolina because our leaders are not working towards common sense gun regulations. I urge this subcommittee to defeat S-115 and all legislators to find a middle ground to protect our residents from the public health crisis of gun violence. Thank you.
Uh, <laughs> this is not a laughing matter. I think that we really, uh, you know, laws are in place because for some reason people don't have respect for each other. And I'm not talking about criminals. I'm talking about citizens who work and play, drive up and down the far highways together. The considerations uh, probably have not come into play on the economic, tourism. Um, I would be reluctant to take my family to a place where I have to look at people walking in and out of restaurants with guns. Most people, most people, uh, imagine the, the open care walking down the street and they're going into a restaurant. You said that the restaurants will have the private businesses because it's their own call. I have not spoken with any owner of a restaurant or a bar who is comfortable with this law. You're walking down, I have not spoken to anybody that's done that. So you're coming down the street, you've got your gun, you got to go into the restaurant, and the restaurant says no weapons allowed, so what do you do with your gun? You got to go back to your car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, may, we may disagree, but let's be respectful and let it happen. Thank you. <laughs> Employers are not going to allow people to bring guns to work. There was a big plant here of 3,000 people had a shooting at work. They have the tightest security there of any place on the planet. That's what's going to happen. That's what rational thinking business people are going to do. If we're going to deregulate, why not save money by deregulation medicine? Let's just have the doctor show up and they read the book, let them treat us. <laughs> How about psychiatrists? And the thing that about the law that says if, if you have an intent to commit a crime, then you can't carry the gun. I don't know of any criminal that has called in and said, hey, I'm going to go out and commit a crime. We are concerned about the mentally challenged. What about those who are angry? What about those who are emotional? They get so charged up they won't let someone speak their piece. What about those people? <coughs> I want you to really think through this. Think of all the aspects. Thomas Jefferson even said himself, we should have a constitutional convention every 20 years because times change. If they were meeting today, they would take a totally different look at Barry Moore. I assure you that. Thanks for your time. <laughs>